What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be getting started with the book of Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. And uh, Shabbat Shalom to all my brothers and sisters out here celebrating the Sabbath, honoring God's holy day. Again, pray for my family. If you didn't see the video I put out the other day, uh, the armor of God, check it out. Uh, we just lost... Um, just lost a dog, a chihuahua, who's been in the family for 15 years. He was 15 years old. And, uh, you know, I, I was there his last couple hours. And uh, I saw him die. You know, it's, uh, it's never easy. Something like that. But uh, I pray for my family. Pray for the other dogs. Because there's three other Chihuahuas here in the house, and the other th and the the three are his sons. He was the he was the boss. He was the he was the father, and uh, they've had him there all all their life, ten years, and um, now he's gone. So also pray for them. And I would say pray for anyone who has lost a pet or a family member recently. Pray for them. Pray for their comfort. Pray for their peace. Most of all, pray for their, pray for their salvation. Because that's what truly matters. Now let's get started with the gospel and we'll get into Deuteronomy. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God, is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, a body and soul, destroyed forever. This first death is just the body. Our soul doesn't die. And there's also a dif difference between soul and spirit. And uh, I'm studying it deeper into that right now to get a better understanding of that. Because even with animals, because I've been thinking about the animal thing, even with animals, you know, our soul is supposedly our, you know, our, our emotions, our, uh, like, who we are. And animals have that. I mean, more specifically, dogs. I've seen dogs smile. I've seen dogs cry. I've seen dogs be happy and excited. I've seen dogs frown and be upset. I've seen dogs be angry, you know. That <laughs> seems to be a soul to me, but but it's not the same as a human soul. And um, the Bible doesn't really specify, I don't think, in regards to uh, what happens to animals. Whether once they die, they're just gone completely, or uh, whether they will... <clears throat> Basically, whether we will have our pets back or not, you know, I don't know. Uh, something I've been thinking about and looking into a little bit. A lot of people would say no, but a lot of people say yes. But the Bible doesn't really specify. I've heard of people having visions, going to heaven and, and seeing pets. Um, but I don't know, but let me continue with the gospel. The lake of fire is death of body and soul destroyed forever. Cease to exist. And, uh, anyone who hasn't been made right with God, anyone who is living in sin, Anyone who, including a Christian who is living in sin, is going to end up there. Uh, anyone who hasn't received the free gift of salvation that only comes through the blood of Jesus is going to end up there. Destroyed body and soul. See, everyone is going to be resurrected. And the God is so gracious because the days that we're living in, you have an opportunity to not even die this first physical death of the body to be just instantly transformed 
into a new body and taken into his kingdom, the rapture. But, you know, of, co of course it's up and look at the light. The sun starts shining right when I say that. Um, but, you know, of course it's up to God who dies this physical death who and who doesn't. But, God is gracious and we're living in the final generation and some of us won't die the won't die the physical death. A lot of us will. And it's you know, it's up to God. A lot of us are gonna may die a horrible death, but be resurrected to eternal life. See, even if we die this death, this death of the body, we can be resurrected. And given a new body and eternity. And everyone is going to be resurrected and stand before God for judgment. And if you're not right with him, you're going to have to stand before him for judgment. And if you haven't been cleansed through the sacrifice of Jesus, you're going to be found guilty and end up in a lake of fire destroyed. So repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. To truly make that move, to make that turn, to turn to God. To truly turn to God, to give your life to Him. To make that move, to truly turn to Him. Repent. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and through His sacrifices offering you eternal life, if you believe that, and you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins. And ask him to forgive you. You truly turn to him and humble yourself before God. Ask him to forgive you. And believe in Jesus. Believe in that you will receive eternal life through his blood. Through his sacrifice. And ask God for forgiveness. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. And he will give you eternal life. The Holy Spirit changes your heart. And leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit is called the helper. Called the comforter. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is the, is the Spirit of God who dwells in the believer. The Holy Spirit helps you to follow God, helps you to keep His commandments and walk in His ways. But if you truly turn to God and ask Him to forgive you, believing that through the sacrifice of Jesus you will be saved, He will forgive you, He will give you the Holy Spirit, and He will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. There's not much time left. And let's get into Deuteronomy. That's the first time I've really, uh, I mean, I don't normally go off track with the gospel and uh, speak on everything I just spoke on. But, you know, it's the Holy Spirit that's leading me to speak on what I'm speaking about. Maybe someone out there needed to hear that. But Deuteronomy, hallelujah, De Deuteronomy is the last book uh, last book in the Torah, most considered to be the Torah. Torah means instructions or law. And uh, Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Bible, the last book of just written by Moses. And Deuteronomy is interesting because it's actually it's actually Moses speaking. It's actually Moses speaking to the people um, rather than uh, just a story being told about Moses and about the people. It's actually Moses speaking. So Deuteronomy is uh, powerful. You know, it's really interesting. And uh, I would say one of my favorite books of the Bible, probably. Um, but let's get into it. Deuteronomy chapter 1. These are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel across the Jordan in the wilderness. In the Arabah, opposite Suf, or Suf, Suf, between Paran and Tophel, Tophel, and Laban and Hazaroth and Dizahab. So this is when Israel was So when Israel was right here. Let me zoom it in. This is modern-day Israel. We see in the next book of the Bible, Jericho, when they take over Jericho. But at this time, 
they were on this side of the Jordan River, like right around the area where the word Jericho is. That's where Jericho is, but they were in this area right here at this point in the, in the Bible. And this is where Moses was speaking is when they were in this area. These are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel across the Jordan in the wilderness. In the Arabah, opposite Suf, between Paran, Tofo, Laban, and Hazaroth, and Dizahab. It, it is eleven days' journey from Horeb, by the way of Mount Seir, to Kadesh Barnea. Eleven, eleven days' journey from Horeb. And Horeb is... Mount Horeb is the mountain at which the book of Deuteronomy and the Hebrew Bible states that the Ten Commandments were given to Moses by Yahweh or Yahuwah, the mountain of God. It's Mount Sinai. Horeb is Mount, Mount Horeb is Mount Sinai. And Mount Sinai, if we go back to this map again, was down here. This is actually this is modern day Saudi Arabia. This is modern day. It's called the Horn of Egypt. I believe. So this is technically modern day Egypt, but back then this was Egypt. Uh this I don't think was actually Egypt back then. But it was called uh Arabia. And so Mount Sinai or Horeb is down here and it's eleven days journey from here up here. Although they wandered in the wilderness for forty years. Um because that was God's plan. And because of their rebellion, God said they're, the, those who uh, rebelled against him are going to die in the wilderness and their children are going to inherit the land. So they, God waited for them to grow up and for the rest of them to be gone. It is 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. And just one more time. So Mount Seir is also... Uh, it's not on this map, but Mount Seir is, uh, also, I mean, it's connected to Edom, but Kadesh, Kadesh Barnea, Kadesh is right here. So, so maybe it's 11 days journey, I, I don't know about, through that whole, through that loop, but, uh, 11 days journey basically from here to here by way of Kadesh Barnea and, and Mount Seir. In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, so they were in the wilderness for 40 years. And so the first day of the 11th month in the 40th year, so one month away, exactly one month away from the 41st year when they would enter the promised land. And so this is when Moses was speaking. This was, uh, this is when Moses spoke the book of Deuteronomy and it was written down. In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that Yahuwah had commanded him to give them. After he had defeated Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth and in Edri, across the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses undertook to expound this law, saying, and I'll continue in a second, but we saw in the book of Numbers how they had uh, defeated the Amorites. They went up into, and once again, I'll pull this map up. They went up into this area and took over the territory of the Amorites. Uh, the Amor well, that's Ammon. There's the Ammonites, Moab, Ammon, Moab, and Edom. But the Amorites had the area on the right side of the Dead Sea here. And they took over from basically from here. All the way up in this area. And destroy the Amorites. And destroy Sihon and Og. After he had defeated Sihon the king of the Amorites who lived in Heshbon. And Og the king of Bashan who lived in Ashtaroth and Edri. Across the Jordan and the land of Moab. Moses undertook to expound this law saying. Yahuwah our God spoke to us at Horeb or Sinai saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn and set your journey, and go to the hill country of the Amorites, and to all their neighbors in the Arabah, in the hill country, and in the lowland, 
and in the Negev, and by the sea coast, the land of the Canaanites, and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have placed the land before you. Go in and possess the land which Yahuwah swore to, swore to give, you, give to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to them and to their descendants after them. He said, Go to the hill country of the Amorites, to all their neighbors in the Arabo, the lowland and the, the Negev, which is southern Israel, the sea coast uh, by the Mediterranean Sea, the land of the Canaanites, and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the Euphrates River. See, I have placed this land before you. Go in and possess the land which Yahuwah swore to give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to them and to their descendants after them. Hallelujah. I spoke to you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear the burden of you alone. Yahuwah your God has multiplied you. Behold, you were this day like the stars of heaven in number. And that's, that was a promise to Abraham. May Yahuwah, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousandfold more than you are and bless you, just as he has promised you. How can I alone bear the load and burden of you in your strife? Choose wise and discerning and experienced men from your tribes, and I will, I will appoint them as your heads. You answered and said, The thing which you have said to do is good. So I took the heads of your tribes, wise and experienced men, and appointed them heads over you, leaders of thousands and of hundreds, of fifties and of tens, and officers for your tribes. Then I charged your judges, and again this is Moses speaking, this is what is interesting about the book, book of Deuteronomy. And, uh, you know, I don't... Um, I'll, I'll bring up the topic of uh, weed. Weed, marijuana. Um, I'm not saying you should smoke. I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. Um, I don't believe it's a sin. I believe it should be treated like alcohol. Um in moderation, uh, but not to be a drunkard or to be a weed head, basically. So the reason for me bringing this up is, you know, I, I used to, I used to smoke a lot and, uh, you know, I've also had, uh, also drink some, um, I've had struggles a little bit with the alcohol, but I myself and any of us, we we can't let any anything be master over us. We can't let um, we can't call we can't let anything cause us to stumble, even if we're just having it. Even even if we're having something in moderation and it causes us to stumble here and there, we 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 can't have anything causing us to stumble. We need to be very careful. But the, as far as weed, you know, I, when I first came to faith, you know, I was, I used to smoke, you know, multiple times a day. Um, and I'm not going to get into my story right now. I haven't, I haven't smoked weed in probably a year and a half or, or at least a year. Um, and I might never, might never again. But I don't believe it's a sin. God did call me away from it. But he didn't call me away from it in a way that was like a conviction of sin. But I felt like well, maybe maybe he has an opportunity for me or something. And and what do you know? I That day I quit smoking weed. And since then I did uh, pick it up, pick it back up and put it back down. Um, but the day I quit smoking weed is the first day I ever did a Bible study. And now I have over, I, I don't know how many Bible studies I have. I, I have over a thousand, probably closer to 1500 Bible studies. Uh, we're now getting into the book of Deuteronomy and we only have Joshua, Judges, Ruth, first and second Samuel, first and second Chronicles, first and second Kings, Ezra and Nehemiah to go through. And that's the whole Bible. And I, the first day I ever did a Bible study was the day I quit smoking weed. Because God called me away from it and he had this 
opportunity for me to do. So hallelujah. But the point of me bringing this up in the, in the first place is, uh, you know, you know, weed in, you know, like intensifies things and it, and it, and it causes you to, to pay closer attention to stuff you're watching and stuff you're listening to. It's not just, uh, I mean, if, I mean, if you're not familiar with it, you know, a lot of people just think weed is just like, oh, it just makes you dumb and lazy. No, but it actually makes you, uh, causes you, causes you to, uh, pay closer attention. It intensifies things, causes you to pay closer attention to watch. You, you, you notice things that you wouldn't normally notice. And that's the first time I really noticed, uh, listening to the Deuteronomy, listening to Deuteronomy, uh, I happened to be at, in Deuteronomy when, and this was actually a point when, um, uh, I hadn't, I hadn't smoked in, in a while. I don't, I don't remember how long, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, maybe longer. I can't remember at this point. It was a couple of years ago. Um, but I, I smoked and, and, and if you go cold turkey for a long time and, and do it, you know, it, uh, you get pretty, pretty high, but, uh, but not, like I said, not, not just like stupid high, not like you're just like, uh, not like you're uh, lazy and dumb, but you know, it's just, uh, everything's intensified. And I listened to the book of Deuteronomy and that's, that's when I realized, I was like, wow, man, this is like, this is so crazy. This is, you know, this is uh, actually Moses. This is actually the words of Moses this is actually Moses speaking. And, um, rather than the other chapters, the other books of the Bible where it's, uh, you know, just a story. This is actually like Moses speaking this. It's his, his, uh, his words, his, uh, speak, his, his, uh, yeah, his words. And, uh, and I realized, I started realizing at the same time, I started realizing like all these times when he's speaking about the promised land, it's actually a prophecy. It's actually, he's, he's actually not, he's not speaking about the, the modern day land of Israel. He's not speaking about the land that, that Joshua took the people into. He was speaking about the kingdom of God, the promised land, the millennial reign and, and eternity. When he, all, all these times when he's speaking about the promised land, it's actually, he, he's speaking about the, the true promised land, uh, the kingdom of God. And it's, you know, it's so amazing. But uh, let's continue on with the study. I, I didn't mean to go, get uh, all into that, you know. I, I will say, you know, for one, for one person, something like when it comes to some, some stuff like this, it can be a sin for some somebody and it can be not a sin for somebody else. I believe, you know, it, it comes down to, and wow, the, the light just completely shone on me when I said that. Um, it, um, you know, it comes down to, to conviction. It comes down to the, if the Holy Spirit is leading you away from something, Holy Spirit is telling you to, to not do something or it's telling you that something's okay to do. Uh, we just have to follow the Holy Spirit. I mean, number one, we have to follow the Word of God, but the Word of God doesn't say anything about weed. It doesn't condemn alcohol. It condemns drunkenness. And so we need to be very careful with, with alcohol because it can lead to drunkenness. But um, for see, one person may be convicted about smoking weed and it may cause them to stumble. Uh, but the next person, maybe it helps them. Um, so I'm not going to judge anybody or condemn, condemn anybody about drinking or smoking, but we need to not be any part of this world system. We need to be set apart away from the ways of the world and the, the, the things that everybody else is doing. And we need to be holy to God and, uh, generally sober and not doing anything that's going to cause us to stumble or to sin. And I'll just leave it at that and continue on with the study. Started, starting back here in verse 16 of Deuteronomy 1. Then I charged your judges at that time, saying, 
Hear the cases between your fellow countrymen and judge righteously between a man and his fellow countrymen or the alien who is with him. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small and the greater like. You shall not fear man for judgment, for the judgment is God's. And I love that that part of verse 17. You shall not fear man, for the judgment is God's. The case that is too hard for you, too hard for you, you shall bring to me. And this is Moses speaking to the people. And I will hear it. I commanded you at that time all the things that you should do. Then we set out to Horeb, set out from Horeb, or from Mount Sinai, and went through all that great and terrible wilderness, and which you saw on the way to the hill country, or which you saw on the way to the hill country of the Amorites, just as Yahuwah our God had commanded us, and we came to Kadesh Barnea. And we looked at that Kadesh uh, a minute ago. Let me just go back to it real quick. This is where he's speaking about Kadesh right here. And we came to Kadesh Barnea. I said to you, you have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which Yahuwah our God is about to give us. See, Yahuwah your God has placed the land before you. Go up, take possession as Yahuwah your God, Yahuwah, the God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not, do not fear or be dismayed. Do not fear or be dismayed. Moses had faith. He knew it was all in God's hands, and he knew that God had promised to take them into this land. He said, don't, don't fear. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then all of you approached me and said, Let us send men before us, that they may search out the land for us, and bring us back, bring back to us word of the way by which we should go up, and the cities which we shall enter. And this is speaking about the twelve spies. The thing pleased me, and I took twelve of your men. So it was actually uh, the people came to him and said, uh, we should send spies into the land. And Moses agreed and did it. The thing pleased me, and I took twelve of your men, one, one man from each tribe. They turned and went up into the hill country, and came to the valley of Eshcol, and spied it out. Then they took some of the fruit of the land in their hands, and brought it down to us. And they brought us back a report and said, It is a good land which Yahuwah our God is about to give us. Yet you were not willing to go up, but rebelled against the command of Yahuwah your God. Because of the report of the spies, because they came back saying, uh, There's giants in the land. There's people, like we were the size of grasshoppers in, in, compared to these people. There were little giants, Nephilim. Not human, um, not fully human anyway. Yet you were not willing to go up. They were afraid. But rebelled against the command of Yahuwah your God. And you grumbled in your tents and said, Because Yahuwah hates us, he has brought us up, up out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go up? Our brethren have made our hearts melt, saying, The people are bigger and taller than we, and the cities are large and fortified to heaven. And besides, we saw the son of the sons of the Anakim, the sons of Anakim there, and which were uh, Nephilim. They were giants, and Nephilim are giants. These giants were, uh, like I said, not fully human. These were offspring of fall, uh, angels, fallen angels, mixing with humans. Genetic ma manipulation. These are basically demons in the flesh. This is what, uh, and this is where demons come from. And I believe there are many different types of demons. They, I believe there's been much throughout the last 6,000 years. I believe there's been a ton of genetic manipulation done between Satan and his angels and humans and also animals. And uh, this is where mythological creatures come from. A lot of this stuff is real. It's just uh, genetic manipulation. It's basically demonic beings and demonic creatures. And uh, in the book of Enoch, if you haven't seen my book of Enoch study, check it out. Go to bit.ly slash Larry Newport 
bit.ly slash Larry Newport. I did a whole study on the I did a study on the whole book of Enoch. Um I can't remember how many videos it was. At least ten videos. Um going through the book of Enoch and it's com it's completely in line with scripture. It's um some may have a different interpretation of some scripture. Uh, but it is completely in line with the Bible. I believe it is from God. I believe it was probably written by Enoch. And um, it gives us a ton of information. And it tells us that demons are are the spirits of the Nephilim. The spirits of these giants. That's where demons come from. So basically these Nephilim are basically demons in the flesh. Demons in bodily form. Um, mixed beings. Hybrid beings. And they're still among us today. Many of them. And they just appear as human. They're not giants anymore. They appear they appear just as regular humans. But there are many of us. Or many of them. Among us today. And uh, you know what's crazy. It's the, it's the tares in Matthew 13. The wolves in sheep's clothing. And it's not only among the people of God. There are many like um, among us in society. You know, it's uh, it's crazy. If you ever seen the movie, They Live, I believe that's based on reality. And these are demonic beings, demons in the flesh. But anyway, that's basically what these Nephilim were. These giants. They're more than just human. But God said the Israelites were going to take over the land. And the people lost faith because they were there were giants in the land. It's about trusting in God. You know, David said, even if ten thousand surround me, I will not fear. See, if if you know God is on your side, you can have a whole you can have the whole world coming against you. God can make the whole world drop dead in an instant. <laughs> you know, he can have them, them all flee in an instant. Yet you were not willing to go up, but rebelled against the command of Yahuwah your God, and grumbled in your tents and said, Because Yahuwah hates us, he has brought, up, brought us up out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go up? Our brethren have made our hearts melt, saying, The people are bigger and taller than we. The cities are large and fortified to heaven. And besides, we saw the sons of the Anakim there. And these were the giants who were in Nephilim. Then I said to you, Do not be shocked, nor fear them. See, Moses had faith. Do not be shocked, nor fear them. Yahuwah, your God who goes before you, will himself fight on your behalf. Hallelujah. Just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Hallelujah. And in the wilderness where you saw how Yahuwah your God carried you. Just as a man carries his son. In all the way which you have walked until you came to this place. But for all this you did not trust in Yahuwah your God. Who goes before you on, on your way. To seek out a place for you to encamp. In fire by night and in cloud by day. To show you in the way which you should go. Then Yahuwah heard the sound of your words, and he was angry, and took an oath, saying, Not one of these men, this evil generation, shall see the good land which I swore to your fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it. And to him and to his sons I will give the land on which he has set foot, because he has followed Yahuwah fully. Yahuwah was angry with me also on your account, saying, Not even, not even you shall enter there. See, Moses wasn't even able to enter the promised land because of his uh, sin. And he he sinned by, God told him to speak to the rock, tell the, tell the rock to bring forth water. But he, I believe he didn't have the faith to, to that if he just spoke to the rock, it would, it would bring forth water. And he struck the rock because that's what, what he did the first time. That's what worked. And, uh, for that sin, for that uh, disobedience of God, instead of he struck it instead of speaking to it, which that's a prophecy in itself about Jesus. Uh, he was not, unable to enter the promised land. Yahuwah was angry with me also on your account, saying, Not even you shall enter there. 
Joshua the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall enter there. Encourage him, for he will cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, who you said would become a prey, and your sons, who, who this day have no knowledge of good or evil, shall enter there. And it, it just brings me back to Genesis. See, see, it goes back to Adam and Eve, and <laughs> oh, wow, this is incredible. It goes back to Adam and Eve, and uh, they were blameless before. They were able to be in Eden, the Garden of God, and they were kicked out because they sinned. They disobeyed God and brought sin into the world. And and therefore, we're unable to, you know, live on eternally. They would have kept, apparently, would have kept living. Uh, would have been able to stay in the in the promised land. But they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And their eyes were open. And it's interesting that it says here. Moreover, your little ones who said you, who you said would become a prey, and your sons, who this day have no knowledge of good or evil, they were innocent. They had no knowledge of good, of good or evil. They they were innocent, like children. Jesus said, "Unless you become like, if, unless you humble yourself like a little child, you will not enter the kingdom of God." We need to be humble, and uh, innocent, and and these children that had no knowledge of good or evil. Said they will enter the land. Because that's. And you know just taking it back to. Genesis again. They ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So they knew. Good and evil. And they, they sinned and knew good and evil. These children didn't know of good and evil. And they were able to enter the promised land. You know it's an amazing connection there. I never saw before. One more time. Moreover, your little ones who you said will become a prey and your sons who to this day have no knowledge of good or evil shall enter there. And I will give it to them and they shall possess it. Hallelujah. But as for you, turn around and set, set out for the wilderness by way of the Red Sea. And you said to me, we have sinned against Yahuwah. We, we will indeed go up and fight just as Yahuwah our God has commanded us. And every man of you girded up on his weapons of war. And regarded it as easy to go up into the hill country. And Yahuwah said to me, Say to them, Do not go up, nor fight, for I am not among you. Otherwise you will be defeated before your enemies. So I spoke to you, but you would not listen. Instead you rebelled against the command of Yahuwah and acted presumptuously and went up into the hill country. The Amorites who lived in that hill country came out against you and chased you as bees do, and crushed you from Seir to Hormah. Then you returned and wept before Yahuwah, but Yahuwah didn't listen to your didn't listen to your voice, nor give ear to you. So you remained at Kadesh many days, the days that you spent there. And that's you know. They, they didn't have faith at first. And this is speaking about the Amorites, so I guess the Amorites were giants as well. Um. Uh, But they didn't have faith at first to go and take the land because of the report of the spies. But then once they then got, got angry with them and once they realized uh, they, they gained courage and gained faith. But God said, no, I'm not I'm not with you. you. You didn't have faith. You didn't obey me. I'm not with you. Don't go up there right now. But they went up anyway. Against the command. <laughs> and uh, they were beaten down. If they would have had faith at first. To go and take it over. God would have been with them. But they but they didn't. They complained against him. They, they spoke against God. And then, then changed their mind. And said... Gain, and then they gained some faith and said, "Okay, well let's let's go do this. We can we can do this if God is with us." But Moses said, "No, God is not with you right now. Don't do it, because they had rebelled against Him." And he said, "Don't go up." And they did it anyway, and they were beat down. But that's the end of Deuteronomy one. 
hallelujah. I look forward to getting going through the book of Deuteronomy and um and the and the rest of the scriptures, you know. I do plan on Lord willing doing We've already been through the writings of Peter. If you haven't seen that study, check it out. The writings of Peter. Uh, if you haven't seen the writings of John, check that out. I did those both in the last month, I believe. And I also plan on doing, Lord willing, uh, the writings of James and Jude. And uh, so much I want to do. I have to study out more, study out the Apocrypha more. Before I do any video studies on that. And. Yeah. Whatever God leads me to do. As far as these studies. Is what I'm going to do. So. Uh, hallelujah. All, all glory to God. Lord willing we'll be able to continue every day. With these Bible studies. And tomorrow or later today. will be Deuteronomy 2. Thank y'all for tuning in. Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. Let's stay strong in faith. Let's endure to the end no matter what. Let's remove anything from our lives that's causing us to stumble, whether this is music or TV, and we should be avoiding this type of stuff anyway, whether it's uh, Facebook, whether it's alcohol or some type of drug, uh, anything that's going to cause us to stumble or not be fully right with God or fully ready to preach the gospel in our right mind at all times. So let's be right with God. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's walk in all his ways and be prepared for the return of the Lord. And if you don't have a re relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus. He will forgive you. He will give you eternal life. We're living in the last days. Don't waste your opportunity. This life is short and anyone could be gone at any time. And one one more time, pray for my family. There's been a lot of attacks on my family recently. Um, uh, my dad, my nephew, got my dad, uh, I spoke about him in the prayer request video I put out. Um, my nephew got sick. <laughs> His cousin, my niece, just got sick. Neither one of them have, they've been tested for different stuff, not not diagnosed with anything. But still, one of them has a bad cough. One of them has a fever and is sick, throwing up and stuff. My other nephew, the brother of the, uh, my nephew I just mentioned, um, Started to, started to develop a cough as well. Dog just died. It just seems like uh, over the last month, there's been a ton of attacks on my family. So keep us in prayer. Let's be ready. Let's be right with God. But most of all, well, most of all, let's be right with God. Let's preach the gospel. And let's pray for the lost. Let's uh, support one another. Let's cast out demons. Let's do God's will and everything. Let's be prepared for his return. That's the end of Deuteronomy 1. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.